Hey everybody, this is Zach Mullins. So uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, if you're already following, then you've probably been following my channel because I've been posting uh, feats of grip strength and stuff like that and a lot of lifting things. Um, today I just wanted to do an episode kind of giving an in-depth look at my current blob collection and kind of explain what that stuff is. Um, so originally there was only one blob, the blob, and that was a half 100 um, first generation, half of a York dumbbell that uh, Richard Soren titled the blob. So Richard Soren is the person that was behind um, naming that half of a broken dumbbell the blob and training to lift it with a pinch grip. Um, and then that kind of has become a staple for feats of strength and grip strength and stuff like that over the years. Um, so now a lot of people will just refer to all these things as blobs but there really only is one true blob, and that is the first generation half 100 that Richard Soren first started with. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, they're typically either just York dumbbells that have been broken, or people might actually cut them intentionally to use them specifically for grip training. But uh, yeah, and if you ever see like, a hundred on it. It's not a hundred pounds. It's from a dumbbell. So it would be half of a hundred. So that's a big misconception that a lot of people have. They'll, you know, you'll show the weight when you lift it or something, it'll have a hundred on it or a 120, And they'll be like, Oh, that doesn't weigh a hundred pounds. That doesn't weigh 120 pounds. And it's like, well, yeah, we know it doesn't. It's roughly going to be half of that because you're, you know, cutting out the handle and the other half of the dumbbell. So anytime you see a blob that has a number on it, unless it was casted as a blob, it's probably going to be half of the number that's stamped on it, um, just for info. So, um, yeah, and like I said, blobs are primarily used just for training pinch grip because of the slopes and the shape of them and uh, stuff like that. So we can go ahead and kind of get into the beginning of the collection here, and I can kind of start talking about some of these. So for the most part, I have all the round heads, which is the older versions of Yorks over here on the left. And then you can see the newer lettering over here on this right line, which is the legacy um, style, which was done much later. So the uh, a real quick example would be, this is an original pre-USA stamp, first generation fat man blob. That's what the feet was named after. Um, this is the original, you know, basically gold standard for lifting the blob. Then there's this, which is a, also a half 100, but it is a next gen or second generation blob. Now, if you kind of come and take a closer look, you can kind of notice that this edge is a little bit flatter here, whereas the fat man has a bigger slope on both sides, making it heavier and tougher to lift. Um, the other way to tell these things apart is if you have the York side, because it was only ever put on the York side, if you look underneath, there'll be no stamp. That'll let you know that it's pre-stamped or first generation. And then when they did their second run or the next generation, they would stamp the York side of the dumbbell. So if you have a second generation or next generation, you can expect to see the USA stamp underneath, but only on the York side. So if somebody tries to lift a number side and then they want to flip it over to show you the bottom to show you that there's no USA stamp, there's never going to be a USA stamp on that side. So anytime you see somebody lifting a half 100 or half anything, if they flip it over to show you that there's no stamp, that still doesn't necessarily mean that it is of the first generation make. They only put the stamp on the York side. So that's just something else that if you're looking to buy a blob or find a fat man or know the difference, that is something that will, uh, will help you out. So as I bring them back here, we can kind of get into what each one is and some stuff like that. So um, when I first got into doing grip stuff, I had no idea what I was really doing. And the first thing I found on eBay was this 90 Legacy. So this is kind of the newer, newer version. Um, and, uh, yeah, I didn't know the difference between the legacies, the next generation, and then the first generation. I had no idea. I just saw that it was a 90 
the goal is typically the fat man, which is a, you know, hundred. So I bought it just, you know, first thing I could on eBay. So this is actually the first blob I've ever, um, ever purchased. And I think I picked this one up like October, either, uh, October, I think October, 2021 is, is I believe when I got that one. So that'd have been the first blob I ever purchased. Um, but yeah, and that's over here with these legacy ones. And if you check out the legacy side, the, uh, the biggest benefit to the legacy style of York blobs is the fact that they go beyond a hundred. The old versions only stopped at a hundred, which would be like these right here. So if you wanted to do a 105, 110, whatever, they didn't make dumbbells heavier than that. So a half 100 blob or the original feet is as high as they would go. Then the legacies, as they come out with later, you could actually, you know, go up into heavier things, but they changed the shape of it. So as you can see, when you deal with these older generations, they have bigger slopes. They bulge out on both sides, whereas the legacies will have one side that's really big and sloping out really wide, and the other side's going to be really flat. So in a way, that kind of helps aid the lift if you have a flatter spot for your thumb. But the fact that these also go up in weight and size much bigger than the original 100, once you get into some of these heavier legacies, probably around 120 or higher, you will actually be doing lifts that are harder than the original feet that was lifting the fat man blob. Um, but yeah, so if I were just to kind of break these down, obviously some of this is self-explanatory. Um, we have a half 90, 110, 115, 120, 125. This blob right here is uh, just under 62 pounds. I think it's 61 something. Um, this is my half 125. So this is technically the biggest blob I've ever lifted. And I haven't really done any combo feats with it or mixed it in with anything else. But that's the biggest blob I've lifted to date. Um, with the 120, I have cleaned and pressed it um, and only deadlifted this one. And then this is what people refer to as Blobzilla. So this is a half 130 legacy. And uh, I have not lifted this one yet. This is actually in this lineup, this is the only blob here that I haven't lifted. So this is kind of the next goal as far as blobs go, is trying to get a lift on Blobzilla. And like I said, that's a half 130 York legacy dumbbell. So from that, I'd like to just kind of cover the round heads and the older ones. So we have a half 90 and 95. This is a next generation or second generation. So this would be the easier of the um, half 100s. And right here, this is a blue blob. So York, at one point in time, they would have... Uh, they're same kind of dumbbells, but they would set them up where they would like paint them blue and they would be in different sporting stores or sporting goods stores. Um, and there's not as many, they didn't make as many of these. So this is super rare. Um, I've only heard of maybe one or two other people, probably two other people that actually have a half 100 blue blob. Um, and the paint's pretty faded, but a lot of these, uh, a lot of these blue blobs will kind of either have like a darker blue or it'll almost have like a teal and it kind of fades and it'll look like that color. Um, just depends on how they've been kept and where they've been kept at. But I actually picked this up um, from Ben Helms. He was lucky enough to um, pick it up and then eventually end up selling it to me. So this is probably the rarest blob I have right here. The others are still pretty rare, but the blue blob would be the most rare. Um, then we move on. This is the original fat man blob. And this was the second blob I ever purchased because that was my goal to do the original feat was to lift the fat man blob. Um, so yeah, that kind of covers most of the round heads. Now up here at the top, I have uh hall 24, which comes in about 54 pounds. That's obviously that's kilograms. Um, but yeah, it comes in right at about 54 pounds, and it's kind of Nathan Hall's version of a Fat Man replica. Now, the dimensions are a little different from the edges and the slopes, but it's still a comparable lift, and it's still a really tough blob to lift. But yeah, I, I got this from Nathan Hall, 
in the UK. So, um, like I said, that's Nathan Hall's version, and this was strictly cast as a blob. As you can see, there's no area where the handle was cut. And on these other ones, you can see where the handle used to be, where it used to be a dumbbell. So for these top two, this was never a dumbbell. This was just strictly made and cast as a blob to train grip. Um, and up here above this, I have the red pill. So um, it's kind of tough to see, but it has a stamp on it. And it says PJ hand weight. So the red pill was also kind of a replica of the fat man, but the dimensions kind of turned out slightly different. And the PJ hand weight, um, I believe the PJ stands for Paul Jeanette. That's the guy that made these. And uh, it is it's very tough to lift compared to the fat man because it's, it's bigger, it's heavier. And then this red paint, that is put on it makes it so slick. It's very hard to get any kind of texture or any kind of consistency to stick to it. So that makes that a very challenging blob. But uh, yeah, overall, that kind of breaks down the kind of different eras going from the first and second generations, even mixing in the blue blob, the legacies that came after. And then from there, like I said, there are a few companies in different places that have just casted um, just casted blobs, you know, without having to cut a dumbbell or, you know, find any broken dumbbells. They actually just cast them and make the molds that way. So people can train pinch grip. Um, but yeah, that's mostly the collection I have currently. So, um, yeah, not, not much else to add. That should pretty much wrap it up. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a uh, chance to basically check out the different varieties of blobs, different, um, whether it be number York side kind of hitting on the stamp and the history and just the different arrows and then also different replicas and stuff like that. So yeah, this is what I have currently. This isn't every blob I've ever owned. I've sold a lot. I've had a lot, you know, kind of just get recycled and switched out over the years. Um, but yeah, right now the goal is pretty much working on Blobzilla because that's the only blob I have right now that I have not lifted. And, um, always doing combo feats or, you know, mixing these blobs in with other lifts and other training methods and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed checking out the blob collection. 